Chris Duffin here at the Kabuki Strength Lab, sitting down, special guest this week, Leroy Walker. So, I imagine you probably know who Leroy is already, but if you don't, he's a man with a big number he's chasing right now, and uh, some really impressive uh, benching under his belt at this point. So, was it 675 on an incline you did uh, just a few months back? Yeah, 675. There, there's a little bit of touch in there, but still still pretty impressive number when you're considering it's incline. Um, 675 flat. I've attempted more, but you know, as it goes, you only get credit for what you actually make it. I mean, that's right. So, still chasing that big 700. Yep, that's the number. Not many men get say they get to chase a 700 pound raw bench, which is pretty damn incredible. So, um, Leroy and I, uh, we met uh, last year in Vegas and have uh, chatted a few times on the phone since and uh, had some many good uh, discussions about. Uh, training topics and I thought we would uh, chat on some of those topics. So when we uh, recently, uh, actually I think it was just last week, we were talking about uh, the training needs and how they change with over the life cycle uh, of an athlete. Yeah, so, and yeah, we were talking about that. It's something uh, not a lot of people touch on because there, there's not a lot of us around, you know, kind of the, the older guys on the on the circuit. But um, I think neither, that, uh, Nevertheless, it's something that's important to touch on uh, as you transition from whether you're a teenage lifter going to your 20s or a 20 going in your 30s or a 30, you know, going in your 40s. If you're going to stay relevant in the sport, I think it's super important that you learn the difference between what your body can handle when you're young, what works for you, what help give you strength, and then how to maintain that, but also cut down on your injuries and how to work through injuries, you know, and more importantly, the difference between lifting while you're hurt versus just lifting with slight pain due to soreness and it's a fine line but i think a lot of people you know they try to push through it when they shouldn't and other times they hold up because the fear of, of getting injured which is something that just comes with the sport well it's really common to like look back in your training and go well this worked for me this is when i was at my strongest this is what i did that's what i should do now right but you know for those that don't know both both leroy and i will be rolling into our 40s here pretty soon and those things that worked for you in the past don't necessarily work for you now. Like your body changes, things change, and um, this is a, a discussion I've uh, had with my friend Paul Carter several times too, is like, you know, people look at my training and they go, oh my God, that's a lot of volume. I'm just, it, that must work. And they wanna jump in and do it, or they pick some program out of a book of some advanced lifter and go, I wanna copy that and do it not realizing that how long and what it took to actually get there is not the same thing as doing that right now. Exactly. <laughs> and, and I think I think a lot of it's to do with the sign of the times, and this is probably where, where I'm not going to say full-on conspiracy theory, but it's, it's pretty close to it in the sense that when I think when we grew up, for example, you go to the gym and you learn, you learn how to work through pain, you learn how to maybe... maybe Maybe we put some some sports tape, you know, some some ankle tape on our wrist because there wasn't, you know, wrist wraps and everything available to us like uh, kids and younger lifters have now, or pretty much everybody. So so you learn to make do with what you had. You learn to do the basic movements. Uh, something you were talking about, say for example, is uh, the close grip. Yep. You see a lot of guys go now and they go, I'm doing close grip, versus when we're, we're brought up, you know, you learn how to lift to junior high. Th this is close grip. And with that, over time, you develop stronger, stronger triceps, stronger wrists. Without lifting in all the excessive gear, you just learn how to be a stronger raw lifter. And as you transition to gear, you're still just as strong because your joints have got acclimated to being able to carry the load. But you see a lot of times now, uh, you see kids 12, 13, 15, 16 years old, they do you know, a couple sets of bench, then they're ready to jump and do their power bands then they're ready to go their two or three boards, then they're ready to put on, you know, their wrist straps or their bench suit. And it's just, I think it's just too much too fast. Yeah, People it, aren't being developed as raw lifters and just and just overall just getting your basic three, your deads, your squats, your bench, and just learning how to be a power lifter, learning how to be just brute strength strong. I think we're getting away from that yeah. in the sport. I, I think it's, you know, I always promote being, you know, analytical and thoughtful with your programming, but sometimes people take it, too far right mm -hmm. and I, I think that's what we're kind of talking about there is you know they're just they're trying to make it way too complicated and I see people 
and they've got the boards and chains and yeah. that, stuff I use all the time too. But you know, it's it's like, yeah, but you're only benching 150 pounds. Exactly. Versus right. someone like yourself, or someone like myself, or some of the some of the other you know well known or, or people who have earned their elite status. They have the strength behind it. And and I and I'm, and I'm not and what I was saying conspiracy theory. I think now two people are too quick to want to sell or to want to buy something. I think a great example of that is CrossFit. CrossFit, they have a tool or a program or a special weight or a special shirt or a special shoe for every single need out there. When it just gets down to, hey, what happened to Chuck Taylors? Or what happened to just, you know, some just good old sweats? You know, and, and I'm not saying technology is a bad thing. I'm not saying we shouldn't embrace it. I just think sometimes it's too much too fast to the point where we're underdeveloping lifters. We're underdeveloping and taking away from strength programs that have worked. And I, and I don't think there's anything wrong with taking strength programs that have worked and still the test of time and incorporating new technology, like incorporating yeah. the rock or the duffalo bar, things that are going to enhance your strength. But that's the thing. People aren't, they don't have the strength to enhance. They're trying to take a 150-pound bench, throw on a couple bands and chains and think they're going to be a 315-pound bencher within two weeks because they follow someone's program who yet they don't understand that's been doing that program for 10 or 15 or 20 yeah. years. It, it takes time. That's something I preach to a lot. And we, we talked about that at lunch, too. It's the um, <laughs> that cumulative, like, you've got to have a vision. Like, this takes such a long period of time to develop strength. Strength training is not one of those sports where you peak at 20 or 21. You know, it, it takes a lot of time for that neuromuscular ad adaptation, the building the mass through the years and all these things. And, and it, you've, you've got to be committed and dedicated and realize that you've got to put in those hours. You got to put in that time. You got to put in those years to to get there and move up in advance. And uh, you know you're not going to find the super secret trick that takes you as that you know gets you from 150 to 350 pounds like that. You know we're all looking for that extra five percent. Well, five percent on 150 pounds is not a whole lot. It's not a big bump. Yeah, it's, <laughs> you, it's you're definitely going to add and then move. And those needs over that cycle change. Like yeah. what you need to do. When you're benching 150 pounds, it's completely different than what you're going to be doing if you're chasing 700 pounds. Exactly. But, but it all comes back to what we're saying is the, the philosophy behind it, it all starts with getting there and wanting to put in the work, wanting to put in the time, wanting to put in the sweat, wanting to put in the tears, and learning how to lift with adversity. How you go to different meets and different benches are going to have, you're going to have different setups. Some benches are going to be wide. Some benches are going to be tall. Some some squat racks, you know, or you're gonna have a monolift. You might go to another one where you have to take it off the rack. You can't, you can't sit there and complain. And I think too many lifters go to meets and expect everything to be as it was at their gym, <laughs> and they make excuses. And it's, it's like you, you can do two things, you know. And a lot, a lot of people do this. You can either let it be an excuse and it's gonna be this big old fat tire that's gonna go in the trunk and it's gonna weigh you down, or you can turn it into fuel and it's gonna, you're just gonna put it in and you're just gonna run with it and you're gonna excel. Now, granted, you might not hit some of the same PRs, you might, hit, might not hit some of the same numbers, but it all comes back to your thought process. How, how, how are you going to react to this? Because you have to react because yeah. it's not the same. Some people, they see it, and they can't wrap their heads around it, and they get stuck, and they make excuses, and then, oh, you know, and they're, I'll just go to the next meet, and then that, that happens again the next one. No, take the onus upon yourself and learn to go to different gyms, venture out of your comfort zone, Use different different bars, you know. Sometimes train on a flat bar. Sometimes train with a Texas. Sometimes train with a Duffalo. Get out of your comfort element, so you can get you can learn to go to different meets and adapt to what your your surroundings are. I, I love those lifters that can't. It's like I I, I got to go get my song on. Like, yeah. Well, that ain't gonna happen if you get on the platform. <laughs> exactly. exactly. <laughs> you might have you, you might be walking up to the platform and the announcer's saying something just really stupid and asinine that like throws you off your game. And you may uh, actually, I've got a funny story. Um, this is back in my uh, multiply days, and uh, I built a monolift and I didn't have a space for it, so it was in my driveway. And <laughs> so it's summertime. And we're training in like full canvas and briefs, and it's like 105, 106 degrees out, and we're all wrapped. We're putting all our gear on, out there lifting in the sun, and my team's like, "Dude, this is just horrible." And I'm, 
they're bitching them on. I'm like, you should be thanking me because you never know what it's like when you get to a meet. There's so many meets that I've gone to where, you know, it's in some small cramped space. Yes. The heat is just unbearable, like all these things. I'm like, you need to be able to perform in this condition. Mm -hmm. This is adversity training. It is. not a lot. Of, and, and there's simple ways around that. You can either train, train for it, or you can, you can do some research. Here's a thought. Go to the gym. That the meat's going to be at maybe ahead of time and yeah. actually find out what it's going to be like to lift under those circumstances. But so many people get caught up in just doing the day-to-day -day grind, going to their gym. And it, it, it's funny because you see these people, they go to a gym and the gym says, the gym. And then the day of they meet, they think it, it says fucking staples, like there's an easy button to push and everything's just going to magically just just happen for them. And no, it takes work. Yeah. You know, and, and it's and I think... The people that can, that, like you said, can overcome and adapt to the adversity are the people that truly deserve to be champions or deserve to hit their PRs. And, and if you can't learn to adapt and overcome, if you can't learn that how you trained when you're 20 has got to change when you're in your 30s and your 40s. Because, but there's, there's benefits that come to it, too. I'm not saying getting old is a bad thing because you get naturally stronger. Some things become easier, you know, and it's... But it's just a matter of just working through it. Yep. And not a lot of, some, so many people, they do different hobbies. They, okay, I want to be a CrossFitter. And no, I can't, you know, I can't do this circuit. So I'm going to, I'm now going to be a powerlifter. It's like, fucking just, just find something and have some good old stick to yep. and, and it will pay off and it will get you it further. Will. And it will transform into real life, no matter what you want to do. Stick to is is a great thing, no matter what profession, no matter what sport, no matter what hobby. You're trying to, you know, be the best at. I preach to that all the time that, you know, being in the gym is practice for life. And that's exactly one of the ways that right there, right there, what you talk about. We're talking about putting in the work and dealing with adversity. You, you, you know, constantly jumping from, oh, I'm going to do powerlifting. Oh, I'm going to do CrossFit. Oh, I'm going to be a runner. Oh, I'm going to be a rower. You end up going nowhere, right? Mm -hmm. So when you reach that, I, oh, I've hurt myself, or my training is stalled, or wherever. That stick to itiveness that you just said, that training through adversity. Like you have to sit down, and actually, I just did my my training yeah. log post on this today. Like, mm -hmm. and develop a plan. Like, how do I fix this? I don't just get to give up and go if I unless I want to be mediocre. And I'm gonna go do CrossFit, and I'm gonna do that for a year until like yeah. I'm all rock taped up and not and that isn't working. And then go, <laughs> I'm gonna be a runner, and then oh my my Achilles is you know killing me, you know. I'll end up still being in the same exact situation 10 years from now than I am right now. Then if I say, you know, I've got a problem, I'm going to figure out a way out of this, put together a plan, figure out what hasn't worked in the past, what I'm going to do to move forward, right? I mean, because you've dealt with injury, mm -hmm. you've dealt with adversity, you can't, you can't not be in the situation that we're in right now without having had major obstacles in your path that... A lot of people would, you know, go, this is, you know, yeah. oh, back in high school, I used to squat 600 pounds till my knees, my back, whatever, you know, that's, th that's the most, <laughs> it's, that's it's the, typical. <laughs> I, I did a post on that just on uh, Instagram about people talk about Snapchat is this new phenomenon, it's a new app. I said, no, Snapchat's been in the gym forever <laughs> because, yeah, because you have people that they talk about how great their bench or their squat was in high school, then it comes, comes time to max and it miraculously disappears, but I, but I back to a little bit about to the not the the conspiracy is, is you have so many people that won't take the honest the onus upon themselves to not only stick with something just to have just the confidence to be able to go through and say you know what whether I sink swim or fail or succeed I'm gonna own this and I'm gonna do it. So many people want to just put. They want to put the blame. They want to always have someone to blame. They they don't want to say. I want to try to, you know, take a little bit of this, a little bit of that, a little bit of this methodology. I might do some some cube method. I might do some west side. And I'm just going to kind of make it my own. So only people want to say, hey, you know what? I'm going to hire you. You be my coach. When this doesn't work out, I'm just going to fire you or I'm going to quit on the sport altogether. And, and that's part of how what we see in society. You see golfers, they don't like their coach. They do away from tennis. Rather than just having, like, you know, the stick to this and just knowing that there's going to be ups and downs and it, and it comes back to a lot of this what you see is this where people are just under trained and underdeveloped because people won't they won't look in the mirror and they don't have the guts to critically evaluate themselves 
you see this all the time, and especially I go to gyms that, especially that are half CrossFit, half powerlifting gyms. And I'm not knocking it. Mm-hmm. It's a great thing for the sport because I think the sports can feed off each other. But, and this happens a lot with when I get asked to help people with uh, bench programs, you go in typical powerlifting gym, they're doing their program calls for squats two to three times a week, calls for deadlift two or three times a week, and they're benching once a week. And I was like, well, that's great, but you're never going to become a great bencher only benching once a week. And you see the underdevelopment where the coaches come in and they tell these kids or they tell these guys or, you know, gals, you know, don't worry about your bench being under 500, Chris, because you squat over eight. You're going to squat nine. Your total is what matters. And, yeah, it does matter if you, if you lift in all three, but not to the point where you can – you can baby one or just say, okay, we're going to ignore that yeah. because we're going to overdevelop this. Mm-hmm. Same thing with when you go just when you go to a basic gym. You see trainers undertrain people so they can keep them as clients. You see people subscribe programs to people so they can just bring them along at their pace rather than just saying, hey, you know what, we're going to do some, some testing, something that you're going to you know, show me later on about with speed and um, velocity where you can actually get an imprint of what you want to do and you can, you know, work hard, but scientifically get past those sticking, get past those break points. Why? Because you're being pushed, because you're being challenged. You don't have a coach that's saying, it's okay, let me hold your hand and walk you through this. And if you don't like it, we'll just skip that as long as you have a high toll. It's about just really just being able to be accountable for what you're going to do. Because at the end of the day, I'm the one on the platform, not my coach, not anybody else, but a lot of people won't accept that. Well, a lot of people won't uh, just aren't willing to take criticism or are scared because of our current society and the ability to give it. Like we get we get clients from other online coaches and look at the videos of their lift and like, wow, you there's some ir- there's some issues here and we have to address it. Did your past coach ever say anything about your deadlift? Oh no, they just let you lift like that. Oh yeah. Never, never said it was a problem. Like, well, we need to address this. Yeah. We're not moving. I'm sorry, but we need to rebuild this. This may not be what you want to hear, but I need you to be a lifter five years from now, ten years from now. I need to have lifting be a positive thing in your life, mm-hmm. not something that causes you an injury. And it's like that—that's the coach's job. Yeah, you've got to be critical. Yeah, but so so many people, they they would rather just be in this day and age, just be super PC. And just sometimes let it rip. And there's there's a difference between between breaking someone down oh, yeah. and building them back up, kind of like what the military does. I'm a, I'm a firm believer in that and certain kind of co- coaching methodologies. And sometimes you have to, you know, break someone down if you have the ability to positively bring them back up. Some people just want to rip people just to rip them. But sometimes you need to hear it. Sometimes yeah. you need to hear you're not as great as you think or your form is shitty. But so many people... They'd rather cookie coat, or they don't want to hear the truth. They don't want to hear it unfiltered. They they want everything nice and crisp, like it's in a bag of fucking sugar cookies, and everything's just gonna be PC and you know rainbows and smiles. And that's that's not the world of powerlifting. That's not the that's not the world that we grew up in. And I think that's why there's such a huge difference between the people that learn to do it right, you know, kind of the old timers, and they pass it down and they embrace it. Uh, Brandon Lilly was saying the other day. It was a, he, he did a great piece on some of these lifters don't even know how to pay homage to some of the great people before him. You throw out a name like a bencher, like a Ryan Canelli or a Mendelssohn, and people are like, Who, who's that? Uh, you know, does, does he work out with C.T. Fletcher? Does he work out with, <laughs> with the Hulk? And, I mean, it's, it's great to have a certain bit of notoriety and a little bit of fr- fl- uh, yeah. fame, but and it's something we talked about. You have to I, – I think we need to get back to wanting to build – something that stands the test of time, something that builds a legacy rather than just want to do something, you know, for follows or likes and whatnot. I, I know at the end of the day, as much as I post and other stuff, I want to, I want to have a legacy. I want to be a guy like we talked, Ed Cohn. Back yeah. in the day, there was no YouTube. There was no Instagram. You just went out and you just lifted and people told you the brutal, honest truth. And he's a guy who can come back now and, and just he's instantly recognized for the hard work he put in, and, and I think I think it's great for the sport that we have slowly but surely. I think the tide's turning to kind of go back to that. Yeah, you know, I, I think there's some really good things happening in the strength training world. 
over the last few years and we kind of get caught up sometimes in a lot of the other negative and social media stuff and other things that are going on but as a whole I really like what a number of people are bringing to the sport with a focus on building it and making it better and I think that's that's what we need to focus on and uh, I think that's the that's the thing to pass on and probably a good point to to, to wrap up this this interview so um, yeah I mean that's you know think about those things that are going to be positive to move the sport forward build a legacy for the sport for yourself you know that's uh you know does that sound big and dramatic yeah it does but you know should we do stuff half ass no not at all i don't think i don't think you can have i don't think it's it's right to have to have god gifted ability and a step on the platform and do anything less than your best and you don't have to be a 900 pound squatter. You don't have to be a 700 pound deadlifter. You don't have to be a 600 pound bencher. Because, because at the end of the day, it's one of those sports where I think the reason we all love it is because it's a culture where we embrace the underdog. We embrace yep. your fellow teammate. We want to see people get better. Because you never know. You never know what someone's struggles are. You never know what struggles they went through. You know, people can watch. A Brandon Lilly squat or deadlift today, and they don't know what he went through a couple years ago, you know, on the platform at the Fit Expo, or someone like yourself who's been, you know, battling some injuries here and there. But but then you watch you you know deadlift one arm, 500 plus pounds for reps, and I think this guy's probably never had an injury in his life. But it's because your love for the sport and your dedication and making it a craft and owning it and working through the pains and the adversities that we're not seeing something that's impossible rather than we're seeing someone who's embraced and is doing what he loves. And that's what comes through. That's what comes yeah. through in anything you do. The passion will always come through and it makes it look easy. Yeah, and, and that's the thing that happened. That's, that's, you don't have to be the big dog on the heap to be that person. You can be at every level. I mean, you walk into any powerlifting gym or group of powerlifters training together and there's people that are on every level of the sport that are having an impact on people around them. Mm -hmm. You know, it's it may be a single lift sport when you're up on the platform, but this is the biggest team sport and supportive sport that I, I think I, I've seen. That's why that's why I'm so passionate and love it myself. Yeah. So. All right, Chris and uh, Leroy signing out for the day. We're gonna get some training in, and uh, probably uh, be shooting some more interviews and uh, content that we'll be putting out. So keep an eye out for it. Stay tuned. If you want to maximize your strength and the longevity of your athletic career or just support the production of further content, click on this video to the link to our store to check out our full line of products.